There we go. The dulcet tones of Chinese electronics. This is a Chinese car built in China, imported into the UK, right-hand drive. MG. It's an MG. It's the MG5. That is the MG5 estate. And this is my garage because it's rained so heavily today we couldn't shoot anything outside. So we're stuck in here and this is fully charged. So, the MG5 EV, uh, I've just got to tell you, I, this, is, this is one of those cars where you instantly love it, and then probably as the day wears on, you get to know the little quirks and fiddles of it. I've just got to say this one thing right at the start, because this is, in a way, a really serious, genuine, existential challenge to the established legacy automotive industry this car represents it more if anything more than the MG ZE that we uh, reviewed uh, last year which was really impressive because it's so much cheaper this is the MG5 EV it's an estate car it's that's what we call it in the UK a station wagon in the US it's a it's a it's but it's not an SUV <laughs> yes, thank you at last there's a car that isn't a compact SUV what I'm saying about this, the existential nature of this, is because this is going to be, these are going to get cheaper and cheaper. The, the, it's not just this company that makes the MG, which was a British brand, but clearly this is now a Chinese company. But it's not just the fact that they're making electric cars, they're making electric cars that are cheaper. So the legacy automakers, that's every car uh, brand you've ever heard of, have all been making for sometimes up to 120 plus years combustion engines that's their business that's what they do that's their skill set and they're adapting and adopting as fast as they can electric drivetrains but you've got to say there's two groups of people that are just way ahead one is Tesla in the United States and the other is any of the multitude of startup electric car manufacturers in China they are streets ahead so everything about this car is more impressive than most of the European uh, electric cars that I've test driven. Uh, in, in terms of its range, its performance, its ease of uh, understanding what the car is doing. So I'm just having a quick look now at the fuel efficiency and how far I've got to drive. So at the moment I've got 198 miles of range in the car and I'm uh, achieving uh, 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour which is not brilliant but it's a grim miserable day and I've been driving in heavy rain but it's very very good for a car this size and a, and a genuine I think this is an important point a genuine pretty much all year round 200 mile range now the uh, EV database gives this a realistic real world average range of 175 miles which I think is very very fair and probably quite accurate but without question in the summer you could easily go way past that it's so dependent on your driving style and what you're where you're driving and how fast you're driving now it's got a i think a 52 kilowatt hour battery but the important point is it's 48.8 kilowatt hours of usable battery capacity so let's say 49 kilowatt hours just short of 50 kilowatt hours which does give it you know from my experience now and the way that the um range is is dropping as i drive I'm very confident I could get 200 miles out of this car today without any problem. Now the other thing I think is important, I really like this, which is a thing that EV Database uh, put on their website, is the vehicle fuel equivalent. So this car, if this car was a petrol car with the same energy use, we've, I've mentioned this once or twice before in other reviews, uh, this would be doing, we would average at about 145 miles to the gallon. <laughs> So 
recharging the MG5, very, very easy. A lot easier than the MG ZE, which was incredibly difficult. And once again, it's got the charging point at the front, which I, as I said before, is, uh, I think it's just much better. So it's just an ordinary uh, CCS charger there, but let me get the cable. Okay, so there, here we go. I'm just gonna plug it in now. But here's the thing, it takes a moment. Is it gonna do it? <gasps> so you think it's not gonna charge and then it suddenly goes bzz, bzz. <gasps> So now it's charging. The 0 to 60 speed is 7.7 .7 seconds, which I have to say, it's quite, I've got it on eco at the moment, just because I'm an eco vicar. I like being on eco mode, but if you floor it, it will go. Now that you do not expect in a car like this. And I've just been driving other cars, you know, recently that are made by European and Japanese manufacturers. They don't do that. This one's got a lot, it's got a lot of grunt if you want it to do that. It's re it feels really well built. And I, I just gotta say this, that I think, still think my prejudices I've got to overcome, and I think we all have to. Uh, you know, you think, oh, it's, it's a Chinese car, it's not gonna be very good. Forget that, scratch that from your, your prejudice database. It's a Chinese car, it's really, really well built. It's a very, very nice car to drive. The interior is stylistically, I would say, a little dated. And do you know how much I care about that? Not one bit. So the Chinese are, what I think they've done is, you know, which we all know about, they've copied certain uh, styling aspects of European cars, and if anything, probably made them better, which is a bit embarrassing for us. Because this is what I think is gonna happen is, a company that doesn't have a legacy of making combustion engines, doesn't have to worry about them, and they can then price the car realistically. They're gonna be able to get the cheapest batteries you can get in the world, because they're all made in China anyway at the moment. Um, they can fit them into cars like this. They know how much they cost. They can price this car at a realistic level so that more and more people buy them. There are now, as we are seeing with Elliott in China, uh, you know, more and more electric cars that are sub 10,000 pounds or $10,000 in the sub $10,000 range. Some of them are very small city cars. Some of them are kind of beginning to be more like, more usable. And then they've all got ranges of between 150 and 200 miles or, you know, 180 to 250 kilometers. That is very, very, becoming very common. Now, many of those cars will never make it to the shores of Europe or the United States. That's, they're meant for the, their internal market is quite big. These cars are gonna become more and more common on our roads. And you know, you would not be a, a radical idiot if you bought an MG5. This car is a really solid, stable, just normal car. It, it, the, the maintenance is going to be really low. The fuel costs are going to be really low. So the price of the MG5 EV starts at 24,495. So just 24,500 pounds, which is uh, where the uh, equivalents in dollars and euros will appear, as if by magic, <laughs> under this image, um, which is pretty pretty cheap for a car this size with the performance that this car has, with the range this car has, with the, with the um, you know, the, the trim, the, the trim, the trim level is, I would say, medium high. It's not super high, but it's got heated seats. It's got, I don't know, it's got it hasn't got a heated steering wheel, which I've never quite, I've never wanted one of them. Uh, it's got very good, uh, the uh, demisters and all that stuff, very, very good. And for 24 and a half grand, that's after the government grant, but actually, that means it's still, if, with no grants or anything, it's a, it's a well sub 30,000 pound electric car. And most of the cars that we've been reviewing that aren't like high end 50, 60, 70,000 pounds have been around 30,000. So this already undercuts that. And it's not a small little two seater city runabout for 24 grand. It's a big, comfortable estate car with a 200 mile range. That is pretty impressive. <music> really useful. So this is just your trip meter 
how many miles you've done to the uh, kilowatt hour, how fast your average speed is, how far you've driven. So obviously here's all the heater controls. They're all actual buttons that you press and do that. And they, that's pretty straightforward. That's straightforward. There, here is the, um, uh, uh, that, that's now in drive. That's in reverse. And goes puts on the reverse camera so you know that's all and then park is just that that is kind of very very simple and sensible work instantly you get it you don't have to faff about wondering how to use it so it took me a moment to work out because i knew that curves was the regen braking and I, then i eventually noticed this tiny little symbol right down here so it's in one at the moment which is virtually nothing you push it forward once <laughs> And it goes to two and then you push it forward again it goes to three which is maximum regen the screen itself is a little leaves a little bit to be desired so like there that's really hard as you can see this is not easy w1 oh look it hasn't done the w where's w gone <laughs> i find this very hard particularly that so so look i'm pressing w now it's come up yeah no i mean i think that shows that that is not terribly easy to use So my overall impression for this car is I think it's really good. There's some really peculiar, I guess a bit Chinese quirks. This is a good one. The number plate, this is a UK standard number plate size. It's not a special one, it's not an extra big one. It kind of overlaps the, uh, the sign there. You know, there's just like little things like that. Definitely doesn't matter. Doesn't make the car less energy efficient or less useful, but it's just a bit, it's a bit shonky, isn't it? That's all. But, you know, not in a bad way, because Chinese number plates are much smaller. So, you know, they haven't really taken that into consideration. You know, they'll get that. They'll work that out. Anyway, the back is impressive. The back has lots of room. So there is the, that's the charging cable bag. But, you know, even that is really, really impressive. If you, and then there's a, there's room for a spare wheel. Oh, oh, that's exciting. Because a lot of cars don't get, it hasn't got a spare wheel, but it could have, and it would fit in there. It's, uh, it's you know so there's really really a lot of room in this car it's, that is very impressive you put the seats down and it gets much much more I'll put, I'll put one lot of seats down now okay see it's, it's huge it's huge it's an estate car it's a proper estate car with a big big lot of storage in the back but spacious it's uh, 1400 liters with the seats down and about 450 normally so it's a big it's a big boot that's all really that's all we've got time we can't do anything else because it's just been so the weather has been so variable today we've really had a struggle with it it's been raining pretty much all the time and when we decided we'd film this bit in the garage it stopped raining so please do subscribe to fully charged please tell your friends and family about the show if anyone you know is interested in electric cars tell them to come and watch this have a look at the patreon link which is beneath this video see if you want to support what we're doing and struggling on to do in all weathers then that's really basically all i should just shut up and get back in the car and go for a drive in the rain so if you have been thank you for watching